Hello everyone and welcome to Chocolate Good Game. European football is back. It's Freiburg against West Ham United. Gonzo, when the draw was made, were you happy with the outcome? Freiburg again, so we're, we've already played them. Not very exciting. However, maybe one of the more favourable draws that we could have got. Yeah, it could have been far worse, couldn't it? <laughs> Let's be honest. So um, you, you can't really ask for more than that, can you? You know, a, a team you've already faced, we know them. There's not going to be some big amount of scouting um, that's been done uh, and, and beaten them as well. And, uh, you know, I think we've, it's fair to say over both games, we've, we've a broad section of West Ham players performing and performing well. I, I I've got to say, yeah, I was I was pretty happy with it. More than anything, Gio, I, I felt it allowed us the time because when the draw was made, we weren't looking too clever at West Ham, and I thought this hopefully could buy us the time if we can get through to the quarterfinals to get our team sorted out, get back to that point where we were uh, earlier on in the season where I felt we were capable of beating anybody on our day. So yeah, I, I was pleased with it. it. Has to be said. Yeah, so was I. I it was uh, in Feinberg or. Marseille for me that I would have liked to have got and listen insert disclaimers no easy draw blah 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 but there are certainly easier draws than other teams and the ones I wanted to avoid like Sporting we did I was going to say but to some extent for the travelling fan it's not that exciting but we weren't at the first game because of the ban so it still is a new ground for people to go and visit although yeah. there is travel chaos in Germany um, this week, which is going to upset a lot of people's travel plans for it. So it's not ideal. But in terms of David Moyes, I think it probably is ideal for him. Like you said, we've already faced him twice, beaten him twice as well. There is already scouting done. The players that they picked out as danger men are still danger men. There's one or two players back for Freiburg that didn't face us in the, in the group stages, including their captain. And they've not had a, a good start to 2024. Um, two of the last three games, yes, they have been impressive in them and good results for them. But since the winter break, they've not been very impressive. So form rise, they're possibly one of the better teams to get. However, when the draw was made, I'd imagine Firebrook would have said, hang on, that's the team we want. We know about West Ham. Yes, they've beaten us twice, but we know what we've done wrong. And look at their form. They haven't won a game in eight. We'll have them, please. Thank you very much. I'd imagine both teams are both management um, size will be happy with this draw. And uh, what did you make of Freiburg in the two games we played them in the group stage? Uh, well, they weren't as good as Olympiakos, and I thought they were. Um, I was expecting them to be the best team. Um, I, I was very. I thought. I mean, you've, you've given it good context there that we didn't have away fans, but I thought their stadium was very loud. I think a lot of Bundesliga um, stadiums are. They got you know loud, passionate fans over in Germany, haven't they, really? So, yeah, I, but I wasn't, I've got to be honest with you, I wasn't massively uh, impressed with them. And I, and I thought we, um, and particularly in a home game, I, I thought we played really, really well, actually. So, um, yeah, I, I, I thought the um, the forward, Salai, was that it? I thought he looked, you know, dangerous, uh, actually. And, and they did have a couple of dangerous players, but we, we, we were in pretty good form when we played them, to be fair, earlier on in the season. So it was, it was, slightly, it was slightly different to probably how it is now. Yeah, I, I was disappointed by them, actually. I mean, pleased to be disappointed, obviously, because it suited West Ham. And, and the, 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 the term professional performance tends to be attributed when a team at the top of the Premier League will comfortably beat a team in the mid-table, bottom half of the table, one or two nil, and it's our professional performance got the job done. Professional performance, it wasn't exciting, but that's what they had to do. And that is essentially how we approach a lot of our European games where we turn up, it's not the most exciting, but it's very effective. We get the job done, and uh, minimal scares, minimal attacks, yeah. but we, we get the goals we need and we get out of there. And I think that's what we did to Freiburg in both games. I think we deserve to win both of them. I think we were clinical and yes. we limited their chances on our goal, which was pleasing. And it's something that we've seen in the Europa League two seasons ago in the Conference League last season, albeit against lesser opposition. And thus far in the Europa League this season, I think we've been really, really good at what we do in terms of the way we approach the game. And I think the slower tempo of European football suits the way we play compared to perhaps the direct hustle, bustle and speedier and physical nature of the Premier League. I think that exposes our weaknesses greater than what the, yep. the European games do. So I think it will continue to suit the way that David Moyes wants to set up. But I was surprised at how 
easy it was actually for West Ham against Freiburg. Like you said, I think Olympiacos was our tougher games, and I don't think they should have been. Um, the fact is that Freiburg qualified, Olympiacos did it, which suggests that Freiburg should have been yeah. our tougher games. You know, top goal scorers of the group by a considerable margin as well, after sticking plenty of goals past the, the Greeks and back at Topola. Yes. Um, so, so yes, yeah, strange one. Anyway, since we've played them, they obviously entered the playoff round. So they have a round between the group stage and this stage where they faced French Club Lens. It was 0-0 over in France. And then in Germany uh, last week, it was 2-0 Lens at half time. However, the Bundesliga side turned it around with a last minute equaliser from as as Gonzo just point out, Salia. And then they went on to win it 3-2 in extra time with Gregor Tisch scoring in about the 99th minute. So they win 1-3-2 in the end. However, they were 2-0 down at halftime at home. And then just recently, they faced Bayern Munich on Friday night where they scored a last-minute equaliser to make it 2-2. A, a game of four, well, I'll say three outstanding finishes in that one. Musalia and Tell for Bayern Munich with two incredible finishes and then the equaliser for... Freiburg at the end being just as good. But in between those games, they got beat 2 1 by Augsburg. And I watched that game and they were terrible. Augsburg were terrible and Freiburg were even worse. So, form wise, they're not doing great at the minute. One win in 10 in 2024. And that's counting the Lens game as a draw because of the 90 minutes thing. Uh, just one win so far for them in 2024. Gonzo, you mentioned uh, Sally are there. Any other players that caught your eye when we played them? Um, not really, not so much. I, I didn't think they were particularly memorable, really. I, I thought Eggerstein, I, I, I did quite like. I thought he was, he was okay. But no, I, I don't come away from there with, with an awful lot. To be fair, it was, was very much Olympiakos, as, as I say. I, I thought were, were quite terrifying, really. And uh, yeah, Salia was looked look to be a good striker and have a really, really good finish on him. Uh, one of the white, honestly, I can't remember. One of the wide players caused us a little bit of bother, but I, I didn't. I just thought we were better than them. It's, it's as simple as that. I mean, the, the other thing, just to say about their form as well, uh, I, I was sort of thinking about it, and it's easy to to look at teams and and not apply your own club's perspective to it. But I think if I was them at the moment, I, I think there's just two things. First of all, that that bounce back ability that you mentioned, that's real spirit. That's impressive, and that's something to be feared. But they'll be thinking the same of us. They'll be saying, "Hold on a second, they were down against Everton, and they fought back, and they came back as well." I also think there's going to be an opportunity where they're not quite doing so well in the league, in the Bundesliga at the moment. And they'll want to get back and they'll want to qualify for Europe again next season. So I'm not saying they're going to prioritise the league. They're going to go all out for this. They really, really will. There's no doubt about it. But again, I I, I watched um, I watched all the Bayern Munich game, but I watched a lot of it. And uh, and I thought they missed... Um, but first of all, Bayern Munich, you know, you've got to contextualise it by Bayern Munich are not in a great place at the moment. Um and I thought Bayern Munich missed a lot of chances in that game. Yeah. Um, Gunter's back, or Gunter, if you want to be, if Gon- Gonzo likes to get I rid do. of it. Gonzo likes to keep it English. So instead of Christian Gunter, it's Christian Gunter uh, for the preview. He's back, um, scored as well. Fantastic strike with his left foot um, against Bayern Munich. And he's, he's, he's back now, and that'll give them a big lift. I think they probably missed him a little bit. And oh, he obviously didn't face us in the group stages. And I think... Salia, for me as well, is somebody that causes problems. And they've got their own James Ward Prowse. When I say they've got their own James Ward Prowse, A, he's bloody good at set pieces, Griefo, and scores penalties and free kicks. But also, B, he's only scored one free kick this season. So even his set pieces have tried jumps. So he's exactly like our James Ward Prowse. The guy that's dead at set pieces can't get set pieces or take set pieces this season. Um, so there's definitely a German James Ward Prowse uh, nice. taken to the field on Thursday night. I have to agree with what you said in terms of that never say die attitude a little bit, actually, to be 2 0 down at half time and to take it back and go 2 2. And the, the atmosphere, when it went 2 1, when they got that one goal back, the atmosphere was fantastic in that game. And it really is the 12th man sometimes yeah. in the Bundesliga. And then they got the equaliser and then they scored. And, and, and Lens had their chances to make it 3-3, but there was a lot of tired legs out there and a little bit of selfish play, I think, by a few of the French players where they just thought, I can be the hero kind of thing. And against Bayern Munich, again, to score, to be 2-1 up, then it'd be 2 um, sorry, it'd be 1-0 up, then it's 2-1. And then you get an equaliser right at the death there. So they've got a bit of a, a, a grit about them. Yeah. But they, they'll they'll think they know about West Ham, or they will know about West Ham now. Yeah. I, I'm sure they've looked back at the game since, and they probably haven't focused on it too much, but they will now, since they've been drawn against us, which is we've done this wrong, we've done that wrong. This is what West Ham's about. 
And it's a bit of a unknown territory for us, actually, coming up against the site again for a third time in the same competition, which is, well, they've possibly sussed us out a little bit. Um, when we did the draw, someone on the watch law made the argument, it's almost like law of averages to some extent. What's the probability that you play them four times and don't lose one of them? And I agree with that um, to some extent, but also the fact that they will know a lot more about us. We will know a lot more about them, but because we won, I think it's harder to analyse because we don't have to change anything. We can have the same approach in the previous two games because it's worked. They cannot. They have to change something. So I think there's possibly a little bit of guessing game from West Ham going on as to what Freiburg are going to do. So, But that's up to the scouts and the coaches at West Ham to work that one out. Gonzo, will we talk about West Ham? Yeah, absolutely. We're well, so all going to start with a little bit of team news. Only Maxwell Crony is missing for West Ham this week. Um, he's had a hamstring injury, so he appears to be unavailable as he was not back at Goodison Park on Saturday. But Alan Caswell was, so he's available for selection. Calvin Phillips is available for selection. He was part of Manchester City's squad in the Champions League. However, it doesn't rule him out. He can be and will be registered for West Ham for this competition. So Phillips is available for selection. So Gonzo, you've got everybody to choose from bar Maxwell Crony. Compete. Yeah, so, yeah. Goalkeeper. On. I think this is a big decision. Goalkeeper. It is, it is a big decision. I was thinking about it earlier, actually. Um, Good preparation for the preview. I like it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was. I was thinking about it, and um, I went back and watched the the, uh, the highlights of the the two games, the um, the two one and, and the um, and the home game. And there was a really smart save from Fabianski in there. And it was quite funny because I was watching the highlights, but I'd forgotten about Fabianski. I thought, oh, and he made the save. Thought, oh, I've got a decision to make here. Because t- 10, out, 10 out of 10, see, from our patron player ratings, 10 out of 10, little spoiler there. You can find out, all, you can find out the rest of the scores if you want to take us up on our, our free trial on Patreon, by the way. Links in the description below. Um, I thought, oh, what do we do? What do we do? I am going to go with Fabianski, but I'm close, Gio. I'm close. I'm really, really close. I am. Um, yeah, it's it's a bit fifty-fifty. It's it's not. I'm not. I'll tell you why. I'm not even putting him in there because he's the better goalkeeper. I'm putting him in there out of loyalty. I'm not sure I'm doing the right thing. I'm going Aviola. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand the temptation, and Fabianski hasn't let us down. It's not like we're bringing no. in a, a poor goalkeeper. And if Aviola was putting in eight out of ten performances every week, I think it would be easy to change it. <laughs> but he's not. If we were winning, if we won against Everton three one, and Aviola made one top save, I think you'd say, "Yeah, bring Fabianski," and he could maybe have made that. It's fine. But I look back at the Everton game, and I think if Fabianski was in goal, would we have won that game? And my honest answer is probably not. Mm. I don't know. I'm guessing. Yeah. I'm not sure he would have pulled off all those top saves. Ariola at the minute is in incredible form. Yes. Would you drop an attacking player in the form that Ariola's in? You wouldn't. You'd keep, he'd say he has to start because he's in such good form. Yes, we normally take him out for the European games, but we're going to have to play. Let's just say Kurt Zuma was in magnificent form recently. Normally, we drop him for the European games. But you sit here and say, no, he's got to play. He's so good. You cannot take him out. He's so good. And I think Ariola's got that about him at the minute, where he is the, the man of match at the minute. I think there's an there's almost I think it's a realistic possibility our goalkeeper will be man of match on Thursday night, regardless of the score, regardless of the outcome. So for that, I want Ariola in the goal um on Thursday night. I think I think it's important that he yeah, starts yeah. because I understand, yeah. Uh, back four. Definitely three. If you want to change it, what are you going for? No, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going for a back four. Uh, I, I, I I'm not gonna, I'm not looking to. Actually, I'm gonna say that I was, I was thinking I'm not gonna make loads of changes, but I think I am actually, but not, not with the intention of, of doing anything saucy. Um, I would play. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change the back four. It's ridiculous. Um, I've just changed my mind in the last ten seconds. Ben Johnson, Manfred Panos, Nathan Gerd, Emerson. Why Johnson for Sufal? Because I think he's good. Um, I also think Sufal, I don't want him to play every single game between now and the end of the season. I'm hoping we get through the next round. At some point, some players are going to need a rest. Um, David Moyes is not going to do it, so I've got to do it. <laughs> and a, a guard for Zuma. Yes. I, I, I'm not even going to explain. Me, I am going to explain myself because we're on a video. Um, Zuma's looking dodgy. Um, and they scored a lovely header, brilliant header. 
But you know what? A good scored a header against Freiburg as well and looked that pretty damn good as well. And I, I want to see this this combination that I've been talking about for you know for the last week or two, which is Emerson and the Gers, those two left footers there. I like the cover he provides for him, I like Pakatar there, and I like uh, Edson Alvarez there as well. I think these the four of them. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I like I like that that four that little part of the pitch. I do like that. So yeah, a Gerd's in. Yeah, I would bring in a Gerd as well. I think um, regardless of form, even if Zuma was in good nick at the minute, I think there's a, a, a realistic possibility he'd have to be rotated out in order to look after him. So I think there's that take a form out of the equation, just fitness and health. I think there's a reason for taking Zuma out of this game. Matthew Panos and Aguero partnered each other in both games against Freiburg, as you said, and you know they conceded one, but yeah. a, a clean sheet in the other game as well. I would keep Sufal in at right back, though, and the reason being, I think he's been good the last couple of games. I think he's getting back to his best, and I think this could backfire. I think Burnley at home is the ideal opponent in between the two European games. Yes. That gives opportunity to rotate. You can almost plan ahead a little bit and say, look, I'm going to go with Sufal Thursday, but Ben, you're starting Saturday or Sunday, rather. You're starting Sunday against Burnley. Don't worry about it. You're going to get your minutes. I'm just going with Sufal because he's in good form at the minute. So I would keep Sufal in there because I want to win. This game's really important. Um, well, we'll discuss how important in a second. Moving into your midfield, what would you like to see? Uh, in midfield, Gio, I would uh, go with um, Thomas Suchek, Edson Alvarez and Lucas Pakatar in, uh, as the number 10 for this well, game. Well, take me through the rest of your team then. I'm assuming I, I, it's going to involve Mikhail Antonio. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Continue. Yeah, I'm going to play Mikel Antonio um, and obviously Bowen and Caduce. That's that's the team I'm playing here. I am, um, I've not been impressed. Uh, I've got to say with James Ward Prowse, as, as I mentioned on on a couple of videos now, he's had half of his set piece opportunities taken away from him by Bowen taking those corners um, from our, our right hand side. As you look at it for the in swingers now, which which I think drastically decreases the need for him to be. On the pitch, really, I think he's, he's. I, I just, I don't think he's sharp enough either in the mind or with with his feet to play in that number ten role, and that's where Moyes will play him in the number ten role. And I think in these European games, you know what? I want a number ten in the number ten role. I really, really do. Um, and I think the that, that, those front three can rotate. I would like to see Moyes rotate them more. It almost. If I was watching West Ham and I was scouting West Ham, I, I'd I'd be looking. I'd be saying, look. They will switch positions, but not for the whole of the first half. So I would be telling my fullback, you, "You're fine there." They will. He will not. Even if it's not working, even if you are owning him, like Nico Williams was in that um, in the game against Cadiz, they he still won't change it. You've got a 45 minutes there, and then what we'll do is we'll regroup, we'll get back in the change room, and then we'll work out what we're doing. So um, I'd like to see Moyes giving giving the opposition coach more food for thought because I think we're very predictable there. But yeah, I I'm I don't want to see the mid I don't want to see Ward Prowse and Suchek in the midfield together um for this game. I do. If this game was at the London Stadium, I'd be inclined to go with your team. Mm. But I think the onus is on them to attack. You're the home team. You need to take a lead to the London Stadium. And I think we're going to see ourselves having that low block team sitting back looking to hit them on the counter attack and I don't want to get bossed in midfield and I worry that if, if Paqueta's in there I mean arguably what you could do is put Paqueta in the sort of false nine if you want to put him on the left and Antonio up front going on the right and drop Caduce into the middle and then I think that would make the middle of the park tougher with that, that player that you've selected and I'm not Ward Prowse's biggest fan, never have been never will be but I think there's certain games where he's crucial with his pressing and with his energy in there. And he he's a bit too safe at times with the ball. He's too sideways and backwards. Um, we've essentially got set-piece version of Mark Noble. We've got Mark Noble with set-pieces, really. And I think that's what we need on Thursday night. When we do get the ball, we are going to need to keep it. And we are going to need to... I hate using the term recycle it, but that's what we do need. What I would be keen to see at times, though, is when you talk about players changing, the players I wouldn't mind seeing changing is Ward Prowse and Thomas Suchek. Now, I don't like Ward Prowse in that double pivot with Alvarez. However, if we find ourselves 
with the ball out wide on a number of occasions and the crossing opportunities there, then I would like us to see a swap board prowess for Suchek. So, right, you you start getting up the pitch, get in that box because we didn't see Suchek at, near that 18 yarder at all. We did against Brentford, but not against Everton. Suchek did not get near that 18 yarder until Phillips entered the field. And that, that frustrated me a little bit. And I remember playing them away and our attacking opportunities were very much counter attacks that we had against Fiverr. Yeah. You know, Paquetta's header was just incredible. It required was it Bowen that crossed it with his right foot and then Paquetta's header. It was header yes, and yes it was it was a right footed cross. Yeah. Stunning piece of play, but it was very counter attacking. I think War Prowse can suit that type of game. So I would start with the the same six that started against Everton. I wasn't happy with how we played against Everton, but I think this is a completely different type of challenge in terms of the game and the style of our opponents. I'd go Alvarez and Suchet with Ward Prowse and then Caduce Bowen and Paqueta for this one. Now, before we talk about how big a game it is and how we're feeling, just one point in direction of Match Bingo, the sponsors of this video. Now, there is no bingo game for this one. There's no bingo card for the European game. So, get involved with the weekend. Um, Man United take on Everton with the lunchtime kickoff on Saturday, and you can get a free card for that game. So, download the app for free using the link in the description below or scan the QR code that's currently on your screen. Sign up, which is also free, and get that card for the Man U Everton game. You'll get 15 things you need to happen. So if you're chill, sitting back, chilling, celebrating West Ham beating Fiber, looking forward to facing Burnley tomorrow, put the football on, look at your bingo card and celebrate everything. You'll need throw-ins, you'll need corners, you need goal kicks. You might need the woodwork to be hit, a certain goal to be scored, a card in a certain minute, number of substitutes, there's everything that you need. And there's three different prizes. You've got first line, second line and full house as well with £100 for the first person to get full house. So get it downloaded. Links in the description. Massive thank you to everybody that's got involved so far. And it's generally nice to see I think we're, are we at seven now? No, we 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 were at eight. We had another we eight. had another one and that's only people that have told us. I'll I tell you now we have never had so many winners. I'm not just saying this because the logo's up there and all that. We've never had so many winners on on anything that's ever sponsored us before. There's there's actually genuinely subscribers winning cash. I think it's brilliant. Yeah, it's a, at least eight. Well, we've had eight at confirmed least winners, but there's probably more as well. People that subscribe to Hammer Chat, download it via Hammer Chat, and have gone on to win um, playing match bingo. So get involved. Links in the description below. Gonzo, uh, still still a big game. Um, at the minute, it's a European football's been parked while we've gone on this. Well, post European football was a good run up to six in the league and a bad run, and we've got a couple of back to back wins in the league now. And European football's back. Yes, yeah, so, so important um, finishing top of your group. It, it it seems like a long time because it has been a long time, and that's really good. That definitely allows you some some breathing space. There's no doubt about it. I think we've benefited from that, and it's nice to have it back. It really is. I, I'm very very much looking forward to it. I got very accustomed to European football. I was thinking about it the other day, actually. I mean, there's there's little old West Ham sort of thing. But I wonder what it must feel like for like these big clubs like Man United or you know, anyone else when that season they don't qualify for Europe. That must be a weird thing if you're a Man United fan scratching your head thinking, hold on, hold on, this doesn't feel normal at all. Because we've had, you know, this is our it's our third year and I'm I'm used to it. I, I am very, very used to it. Uh, and I absolutely love it, mate. Um yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Long may it continue. My my perspective has, has totally changed on on uh, well on the smaller competitions, maybe. You know, I've always thought there was valid you know the, the Champions League was validated and I just thought oh, I was too bloated European football's too bloated it doesn't you know the lower it goes down it doesn't mean anything well it does it, it does it does it means plenty as, as anybody that, <laughs> that would have celebrated the uh, Conference League win last season will testify yeah I'm buzzing for it I'm really looking forward to Thursday night I'm really looking forward to next Thursday as well the return leg at the London Stadium hopefully getting through and if you can we're into the quarterfinals. Do I think we'll go on and win the tournament? No. Have we got a chance? Yes. A very small one. But at the, at the same time, and maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but whilst I'm hoping we go through, I'm also hoping Leverkusen get knocked out and Liverpool get knocked out. And actually the quarterfinal draw, there's maybe two or three teams in there that I wouldn't mind getting. Mm. And if we can get a favourable one before you know you're two ties away from the semi-final and anything can happen. When you're at that stage of the competition, anything can happen. So I'm really excited for it. Absolutely love European football. I've always wanted to be in it. I, I 
I like the Conference League. I like the Europa League more. I'm sure I'd enjoy the Champions League more if we yeah, ever got sure. there. Yeah. And this is our best route into it. Whoever wants Champions League football, this is our best route into it by winning the Europa League. Um, at this point, it's unlikely, but if we can do the business over the next 180 minutes, that probability increases well, quite dramatically, we go from 16 teams to eight, um, eight yeah, teams. So <laughs> our, our odds go up quite favourably. So I'm really looking forward to this one. And it's sort of like a nice distraction from the Premier League. And um, you get away with sort of playing crap football in European football. Your style doesn't really matter. It's it's all about making sure you're in the next round. And if come whoever wins it, you don't look back at history at, a certain team winning a cup and go, yeah, but the football wasn't very good, was it? it that doesn't matter. It's who wins it at no. the end that matters, and that is it. So, listen, let's let's get a well. First of all, are you confident? And second of all, do we need to win, or is a draw a good result? A draw is still a good result. Um, I'm confident. Yeah, I'm confident of the tie. Look, who have we lost to? Olympiacos and Frankfurt in the last two years. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I mean, it's outstanding, actually. It's outstanding. Three years. Last three years. Sorry, yeah, three years. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 years, in, yeah. it's incredible. It is. It is incredible. And I know someone even like, I'm still moist out typing at the moment. Um, but it is incredible. It really is. And and you have to. We can look at anything. We can look at recent form as a barometer as a signal we can look at anything but i don't think you get much better than let's look at the last let's look at two europa league campaigns and a conference league campaign and yes we've played some pretty crappy teams we've played a, a back to polar and this that and the other um we've played every team in belgium at ginswood g um but we've also played sevilla and olympic Lyonnais and, and, and fiorentina and you know we've played some pretty um pretty decent team so well even olympiacos i know they beat us but they're hardly like my nose when it comes to european football this is a club that's huge when it comes yeah, to the huge. european side of things yeah incredible aren't they um i i i, I am confident i am confident we've got some brilliant players i think we know what we're doing in europe and yeah i'm i'm confident i am confident of getting through actually i think if we're in form and and i mean everyone's playing well or at least, you know, whatever, nine players, are playing, you know, I actually fancy us to, to beat anybody on our day with God's grace and a fair wind and the planets aligning. I'm not saying we're better than anyone else, but I do think we can give most of these teams a bloody nose. I mean, yes, Liverpool are a concern. There's no doubt about it because they are. They, they are. They're a, they're, a, they're a bit of a super team, aren't they? Really look at where they are in the league and. You look at how Arsenal are playing at the moment. Look at how um, Manchester City are playing, and Foden's playing so well, and De Bruyne's back, and 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 um, what's his name, Haaland's, you know, scoring some goals. Despite all of that, Liverpool are still above them. Liverpool are above Arsenal, and Liverpool are above Man City. That's that's how good Liverpool are, and, and they've missed Salah for a you know a, a big chunk as well. So. They're no, they're no fools. They are one of the best clubs in the world. Absolutely. I mean, probably one of the top five football teams in the world, Liverpool. So I'm not saying we rock up and beat Liverpool. But I do think if things go our way, then we do still stand a chance. And, and I think we can get through in this. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. But a draw is a decent result. I don't think we need to avoid them. I'm not confident of putting Liverpool out or no. Liverpool and those are the two sides I look at and think, no, thank you. Um, stay away from them two in particular completely. And if we've got drawn against them, uh, I'd have hope, but it'd be a smither of hope. Then, yep. then, and it's almost like built on a dream rather than expectation. Um, but that's why I'm hoping other teams will put them out for us. So they can, if they both go through, can they draw each other in the quarterfinals, please? At least one of them. Oh, are, yeah. are, are, are right. But um, in terms of this one, I think a draw is a good result for us on Thursday. If you offer us the opportunity to have a, a home tie with anybody, really, and say you win, you're through. Um, simple as that. I think you, you, you take it. You know, we took Sevilla back to our ground and overturned a 1-0 deficit, which was, you know, an incredible evening. And I think if we can get a draw, I'm hoping for a win. I'm, co I'm confident in the tie as well. Do I think yep. we will be in the next round? Yes, I think we will. Um, can I get any final words on Thursday's game, please, and your score prediction for the night? 
yeah, just really looking forward to it. Uh, I, I think the um, the the home leg was was I really feel where um, where Edson Alvarez announced his his arrival as a as a top quality midfielder, and and the, the irony is we we've seen that again in the in the last game we we've seen that stuff, and you know because of your beautiful ball over the top um, for just uh, to score. And then, he, and then he scored with a really smart finish, um, which, which you know, um, he, he almost got the, the, the similar, very, very similar assist, of course, against Everton. And he, so I'm really looking forward to him. He, he must he must feel like a million dollars at the moment. He really, well, 34 million euros probably. But, um, you know, he, mu- he must feel top of the world. He really must. And and, and I, I think I'm unconcerned about, Pakatar having a crappy game the other day. I think he'll turn up with his chest puffed out as well. He'll feel eighty million dollars. And um, yeah, I, honestly, I'm I'm really really looking forward to it. I suspect I I suspect it will be a draw, a one-one draw is is the score that I'm going for. But I would not be surprised if we won. Yeah, I was flirting with one-one or two-one us. I think they're conceding a lot of goals at the minute, Fiberg, and they're they're scoring in most games, but even a couple of the ones that they've drawn, Frankfurt, I think it was, was 3-3. They still conceded three goals. So we've both got a leaky defence, but we're both yeah. capable of finding a net as well. And if Paqueta wants his £85 million move to Man City in the summer, he's got to perform. This is where you have to turn up. I think Pep will shrug off a crap performance of against Everton. You don't worry about it. I've seen my players struggle against Everton sometimes. But... If you want your dream move, and, and this goes to Caduceus as well, you or Edson Alvarez has spoken about potentially leaving West Ham, not recently, but when he um, pretty much as soon as he joins, like, yeah, I might go to a big club, I might go to a Champions League club. I don't mind that ambition. I, I like it. I like signing players with ambition to go play for the best clubs. That's the right reasons to join a football club. It's the ones that rock up and after six months they can have a new contract, please. Double yeah. the wages. Those are the ones I'm suspicious about. So when a player has ambition, it doesn't bother me because it's up to a, us, match it. They've just told us they want Champions League football. Well, what can we do to get Champions League football so they don't have to leave to fulfil their ambition? And second of all, if they want that move, well, how good have you got to be to get a move to Manchester City? You've got to be ridiculously good. Well, we'll benefit from that in the meantime. And this is where you've got to have your contracts watertight to cash in, et cetera, et cetera. You know all this stuff. But if you can't want that move to the Etihad, you've got to turn up to, on Thursday. You've got to turn up next Thursday around and get West Ham into the quarterfinals. Sometimes these games are decided by... A bit of the X factor, and um, we've certainly and listen. Feiberg, I've got a few players capable of it, but we've certainly got our players capable of winning a game on his own. He's starting with the goalkeeper and finishing with Jared Bowen and everyone in between. So I, I'll, I'll go one-one as well, and I think it'll be a good result for us. And uh, taking back to the London Stadium for the straight shoot out with them, but I feel confident we won't lose. I do. I do feel confident we won't get beat. Anyway, shall we leave it there, my friend? Yeah, looking forward to it, mate. If you've enjoyed the preview, please do drop a like on it by clicking thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to Hammers Chat and you've enjoyed it. And if you fancy supporting the channel, go to patreon.com forward slash Hammers Chat. Links in the description. You can get a seven-day free trial as a mild addict. And you can access the player ratings from the Everton game. And go on those Q&A with Dean Ashton. We'll also have a breakfast show on Thursday morning ahead of this one. And then on Friday, we'll have the player ratings from this game that has yet to take place. If you're a patron, we'll catch up with you then. If not, we'll see you... Thursday evening, around five minutes, so 6.55. We'll see you at 6.55 for the build-up show. Catch you then.